You're watching BetSafe and we are talking round 10 of the Formula One World Championship 2017. With me as always is Mr. Johnny Herbert. Now, this week's discussion must start before we get on to everything British and Silverstone, home of racing, obviously. Let's, let's talk about the Austrian Grand Prix and one thing a man should never pull another man up and that is going too soon. Yes. Now, what? <laughs> explain this, Johnny, because it needs explaining. There it is, man. Well, it's all about timing and reactions, isn't it, I suppose, at the end of the day. And my, 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 Valtteri Bottas, absolutely sweet as a nut, getting those perfect reaction times, obviously, releasing the, the paddles when the lights went out. But it was how he had the timing of the, the amount of throttling needed to the speed that he actually released those paddles to get all that energy without slipping, without being wasted, directly through the tyres onto the tarmac. Bang, and he went. Sebastian Vettel, on the other hand, had a very good start, but wasn't very happy. That's why he was banging on about, oh, he must have absolutely jumped that start. But it wasn't. It was just the perfect start. I've only done it once in my life, and it was just under two seconds. And that was the only time in my whole career, in those 160 odd races that I did, that I got it absolutely perfect. And I think that's what we saw on Sunday. So, nothing premature, no. as far as we are concerned? Mm, definitely not. Not it, on this occasion. Everything <laughs> just, so, what, what you're saying is everything aligned, yeah. really, for Valtteri Bottas. Exactly. All the stars are in the perfect, in the perfect yeah. scenario. And again, that's through practice at the same time. You can do all this work on the simulator. And I think that's what he's been able to do. The team do very much with the electronics, trying to get it so the driver feels everything that's going through the tips of his fingers so he can get the best start that he can. And I think Valtteri did that absolute perfect one as I said before and also he probably well he did Mercedes a great favor as well yeah, but what, yeah. what what happened to Lewis what was what was going on he seemed very down after what was a great weekend before he seemed very down well it was it was a, a, a frustrating weekend because obviously with the, the issue that he had and then the penalty that was given to him and the team of course it affected what uh, Lewis was able or wanting to, to, to do that weekend so when he was bumped back that's frustration because he knew on the front row he had his teammate for one, but of course he had his championship rival on second on the grid, Sebastian Vettel. And he knew it was going to be hard. It's a very short circuit, just over a minute round that sort of uh, Red Bull ring, but it's very hard to pass. And I think that's where he knew it was going to be a difficult race. I think he did a good job, to be honest, getting to fourth place. But I think it's still the frustration of knowing that Valtteri, now has got close, there's only 15, 15 mm. points difference between those two, but of course it's 20 points difference to the championship leader and Sebastian Vettel, and he's right stuck in the middle of that. So he's actually got pressure now coming from his teammate behind, but he's also got the pressure of, you know, Sebastian having probably a better run, having a bit more luck. We have to go back to Azerbaijan, and he got luck there when Lewis had his problem with his, with his head rest. So I think it's all those ingredients that Lewis just wants to have a smooth weekend what a better place to have it start to happen. Silverstone, British Grand Prix, that'd be great. The old argument about the best car wins, is, is this being proven, disproven in, in this year? Or is, it, or, is it, or is it the best car, the Mercedes, and it depends which either one is, is driving it? Well, I, I, I think with the mix that we've had, you know, we have to go back to Azerbaijan. We didn't have a Ferrari, we didn't have a Mer winning, we had a Red hmm. Bull winning. So that's where it's been very different. We've, uh, we've had uh, Sebastian and, and Lewis, I think they've won three times, but it's only two times down to with, with Valtteri, which is why he's only 15 points uh, different on that front. So from that scenario, um, it's just, I think, if you don't quite have a, a smooth weekend, like we've seen with Lewis in, 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 uh, in Austria, it doesn't quite happen for you and that's a frustration for a driver because I think in any sport that you do you want to have a, a good round of golf you want to have a good sort of tennis match at the uh, the same time trying to eliminate all the mistakes that you make and that's exactly the same but when they're not your errors like we had with Lewis in you know with the, the penalty you had it's a frustration because you've done nothing wrong whatsoever but of course you're the guy that's you know got that penalty and you've got to deal with it and you've got to try and do the best job uh, that you can and I think that's why we had a nice mix up with this championship this year because the fastest car I still think is probably that Mercedes but the Ferrari's not too far behind but if you haven't quite got the the right ingredients or you have an issue with you know with a, with an engine or an NGUH or whatever it may be that's going to sort of really hamper your weekend and I think that's where they're so so close mm -hmm. if you get the bit you know the, the the smooth weekend you're going to have the better weekend 
and we did quite like the uh, the odds as well. Valtteri Bottas, it was five to one last week, wasn't it? Oh yes. We'd have done all right, wouldn't we, Johnny? Oh, indeed, we would have done. Damn yeah. again. I know. I know. <laughs> Kimi Raikkonen, you know, in a distant fifth, is he still disappointing? Well, he is. I think uh, Marchioni from Ferrari even mentioned it. You know that he wants sort of you know a better Kimi Raikkonen, and Kimi's come out and mm. said, "Well, I'm actually trying my best." But he's up against a, a very hungry Sebastian Vettel as a teammate. It's the first time we've probably seen him really wanting a championship again since the last one he had when he was at, when he, when he was at Red Bull. So I think we're having a very strong Sebastian. We've also got Lewis who's always going to be there or thereabouts uh, at the same time going for a championship win uh, once again. But it's the fellow Finn. Valtteri Bottas, they've had a lot of sort of history coming comings together, so there's still that battle to be the top mm. Finn at the same time. And at the moment, he's losing out on that battle. He's not the top Finn like he has been for, for many a year. So there's a slight changing of the guard, um, and Valtteri's doing a you know a cracking job at the moment. From a from a a, a personal point of view, and you know, maybe a, the fans out there's point of view, we always want to see Kimi do very well. We always, we always want to see him trying to go for a pole position or race wins or a championship. And at the moment, it's just not quite happening. We've just been discussing this basically all year long, haven't we? We're mm. waiting to hope that it all comes together. Had a great Monaco, didn't quite work out in the race with, with uh, the strategy that happened. But then it hasn't really sort of come back to him you know since then so that's where I think Marchione is sort of wanting a little bit more for him it's putting a bit more pressure on him because the, the you know there is a lot of talk Max Verstappen wanted to go to Ferrari for next season so that's where all those ingredients are suddenly pressure wise it's shifting big time onto Kimi it's coming from the top man at Ferrari but it's also coming from the young man as in uh, as in uh, Max Verstappen as well well let's have a look then drivers standings after eight uh, sorry nine uh, Vettel 171, Hamilton 151, so that's opening up, isn't it? 20 now. Yeah. And then the interesting thing, Valtteri Bottas 136, he's creeping up, he's actually putting the pressure on Lewis as well. Mm. And Ricardo 107. What's it? When you look at Valtteri Bottas, I mean, you're, you're coming up to the halfway point, aren't you? Mm. It's just. No, it's he's not out of it, is he? No, you know, not by a long way. You know, you have a uh, a weekend where one of them or even both of them don't even finish the race, and he wins it. He's ahead. Yeah, it's a, you know, yeah. so we can change so so quickly, and I think that's where Valtteri has been so consistent. To be honest, the, this season, um, he's got those two wins now under his belt. He's feeling more at home. I think he said it sort of in Austria as well, and that's very important for a driver to have that comfort factor there because when things are tough you need that factor to be there with the team sort of putting an arm around you and saying yeah we're still with you that's what Lewis is getting anyway he's the more frustrated of the two it seems at the present time it's a typical Finnish Valtteri Bottas way of if he has a good weekend there's nearly that smile that sort of comes through when he was interviewed on the podium but if he doesn't quite have a good weekend there's sort of almost a smile there at yeah. the same time. So he's very cool, very, very calm uh, at the same time. And I think because of that, that's why I think we're seeing him sort of put in these good results, get the pole position like he did in Austria, have the blister uh, on the front tyre, have the pressure from uh, Sebastian Vettel again after I think Russia, I think it was the same thing, really sort of pushing him to the, on those last few laps, but dealing with it without a problem and still being able to come away from the win. So from a strength point of view he's looking in a very good position at the moment because he's not the one under pressure it's actually the two in front of him especially his teammate well now let's look ahead then to Silverstone we can we can tell it's Silverstone coming up because <laughs> it's going to rain <laughs> any minute now there's a good chance now an Englishman winning at Silverstone who could tell us what that is like Johnny I should step I should step up to this one come along then it is a brilliant experience because um, when you're coming through Formula Ford and Formula 3, the younger categories, there are those race fans, you guys out there, that were there when we were coming through that. And when we get to Formula 1, you're still there. Mm. And the hundreds of thousands that turn up uh, over that weekend, I remember Mansellmania back in sort of 92, I remember Lewis last year doing the crowd surfing yeah. and stuff like that, and before the race, you know, jumping up, doing autographs and pictures and all that stuff. That's what the crowd want. That's what's so, so important to the build-up 
to to the race weekend. And you know, when I when I was there, yeah, what did I you was, do in '95? I, I was I didn't do any ground surfing <laughs> at all. But you know, I was sort of happy because obviously yeah. the build up was good. I had a good car. I knew for for the race itself. I knew I was up against Michael and Damon. Like, thankfully, Damon, my good pal, sort of had that coming together with Michael, which allowed me to to get into the lead and, and, and win the race. But it was seeing the sea of fans and the sea of Union Jacks and you guys shouting, not just for me, but shouting for even for the guys that are at the back of the grid, you know, Jolin Palmer, there'll still be a massive support for him to hopefully get, you know, some points and it'll be great to, for him to get to mm. points at, uh, at Silverstone. But that energy that you guys give me that you will give Lewis at the at the weekend, you give Jolian uh, as well, is so, so important. Mm, but that's why I go back to Mansomania. He loved that. Mm. The crowd loved that. He got sort of involved with them. He drew them in, used their energy, and then was able to, you know, win those those good few sort of um, British Grand Prix victories that he did. So it's thanks to you guys that we are able to, to get in a car, put that visor down, get on with the race itself, have a massive thrill by doing that, but then actually doing it for you guys as well, because I think that's a very important thing. So Lewis will be going into this weekend, hopefully drawing from your energy, and then he'll actually be able to get a race, a uh, British Grand Prix race win again. What's it like though, coming over that line, at home, home and racing if you like, what, what's, what's that, what is that like? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's like nothing else I'd ever experienced, because the first one is always special anyway. Mm. Uh, and for me, that's exactly what Silverstone was. And it was, it was a bit different because of the accident I had. It was the coming back and everything else. That was the first emotion. But then the emotion of winning a Grand Prix, doesn't matter where it is, but when it's a Silverstone and it's your Grand Prix, that just makes it so much bigger and better than everything else. And my, my, my biggest thing I remember, as I said to you, was probably the last lap and actually the slow down lap where you're just seeing these fans go absolutely ballistic because a British driver has won the race at your Grand Prix, at their Grand Prix. And it's just emotional both ways. And I think that's what's so, so important about what Formula One a is able to give and sport in general is it's, it's, it's good for you if it happens to you, but it's also good for the guys that are watching it, the fans that have turned up, because that's what they want. They want to have a British success. So thank you guys. Who? Does this classic circuit suit? Do you think going in, going into this weekend then? Because obviously, you know, you've got to, you've got to at the minute count Valtteri up there at the top. I mean, it, although you know, it, first few weeks or first six weeks or whatever, we're just talking about Lewis and Sebastian. But should we not now? Um, I, we, we've got to, we've got to, we've got to put Valtteri in it. We've got to put sort of you know Lewis and Valtteri together, obviously, because they're in the Mercedes. I still think it's sort of the ultimate fastest car when it comes down to to the one lap. The, the characteristics that we have at Silverstone are brilliant because the majority of the, the track is is fast, proper fast, like Turn 1, Cops, probably through Maggots, Beckett's, you know, it's a brilliant section to, to, to mm -hmm. drive through. So we've still got those elements that are there. They're quite long radius, and I think in some regard that suits probably the Ferrari, I think in many regards. I think the one thing that the, the, the Mercedes looked very good, especially in Azerbaijan, I remember on Lewis's pole lap, is the last sector, just before the uh, uh, club corner, the last turn going on to the start finishing straight. It's, you've got to have a very good car that changes direction. And that's where the Mercedes is very strong as well. It changes uh, direction very, very well in the slower speeds. But in the high speeds, you also want to wrestle that car through those corners. You've got to have trust in yourself and belief that you can really load up the tyre when you're turning through turn one, for example, which is pretty much flat out uh, through there, especially this year with the big fatter tyres. But you've still got to get the line without scrubbing speed off at the same time. So the, the whole ingredients of Silverstone, you've got to have finesse, but you've also got to be aggressive at the same time. Sebastian is quite smooth with his aggression. Mm -hmm. It's not a Lewis. Lewis is very quick with a turn in, quite aggressive on the turn in. Sebastian's not. And then you do Lewis's teammate, and he's quite smooth at the same time, but they seem to be able, able to produce the, the correct tyre pressure and tyre temperature. They're able to utilise the, the aerodynamics they've got at the same time, but they have got slightly different styles. If you do it on the car itself, the Mercedes definitely seems a sharper front end. It's got a much, much better way, as I said, of changing direction. That's fast 
and slow. The Ferrari is very drivable. And I think what we saw in Austria, we had the blisters with uh, Valtteri in the race, but you didn't have the blisters with, with the Ferrari uh, and Sebastian. So I think that's where, as a race car, the Ferrari could actually be sort of quite a big threat. But I think the way that Lewis is probably a bit frustrated with the result we had in Austria, and the energy is going to draw from, from the fans that are there, which is going to be important for you guys to give him as much support as you can. That might just draw out that extra little thing. But that's going to be qualifying. I still think they're going to have the advantage in the race. That's going to be the tough one because I'm not sure how that's going to play out. But the Ferrari, I think, will be maybe stronger here, more strong, more stronger here at Silverstone than actually it was in Austria. For Lewis Hamilton, how big an edge does it give him? I mean, there's two ways of looking at this mindset, isn't it? You know, one, it gives him the big push that he needs because everybody's telling him he's loved 300,000 people over yeah. three days. B, the other thing is, is the pressure of it, isn't it? Everyone wants you to win, and, and you're putting that pressure on yourself as well. So which way does it, you know, which way does it go with Lewis? Pressure deals with that, just sort of grabs it, puts it in a little ball, puts stuffs it in his pocket, and just gets on with the job. So it's not really the, 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 the ability to have those sort of nerves going into qualifying or the race, because he uses, uses all that in a positive manner. And I think that's what's important for any sportsman to, to be able to do that, if it's tennis or golf or whatever mm. it may be. You've got to absorb all that pressure that's, that's on you. So that's not a problem. But Sebastian and Valtteri, same thing. They don't have a problem with the pressure that is put upon them by the team itself maybe by the media at the same time, but also by the fans that are there, especially when you're going to a British Grand Prix. You know, those thousands and thousands of fans that are going there are going to be supporting, or the majority are going to be supporting Lewis, for sure. Sebastian will know that, but actually Sebastian will go, yeah, I'm going to prove you wrong. And I think he will use the energy they're giving Lewis, but actually try and use it himself to sort of give him a better chance to be mentally stronger, knowing that Lewis is probably going to be on that, I don't know, that little bit of a, of a better better situation just because he can draw from, from what they do. That's exactly what Nigel Mansell did back in, back in the early 90s. Lewis did it last year, I think, at the same time, and I think he'll do it again. But it's not a given on either side which one is going to sort of have the stronger mental state. It's all going to be down to who has the better car on the day. Well, constructors-wise, Mercedes are running away with it, aren't they? 287. Yeah with Ferrari's 254. But going into this race, for you, whose race is it? Realistically, realistically, I think, because it is the faster car, it's got mm. to be Mercedes and it's got to be Lewis. So I think he's got to be very careful with Valtteri. Uh, but I think he's the man who's going to be able to do that. The dark horse, the black dark horse, on that little yellow Ferrari badge is obviously going to be Sebastian because it, I think it could suit them. I just don't know if, if they get them in the same window, the perfect window for the Mercedes and the Ferrari, I still think the, the Mercedes has that slight edge. So I think Lewis will come away with it this weekend. Okay, well let's get ready for the rain because it is Silverstone. Uh, we're off now to practice our starts because nobody accuses Johnny and I of going early. You can check out all the latest odds on betsafe.com and look out for some very comprehensive race specials. God save our gracious queen. Long live our noble queen. God save our queen. As you were, Johnny. I think it was the queen.